In this video, we're going to talk about ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. ATP has three subunits. The first one is a 5-carbon ribose sugar, and that is attached to a nitrogenous base. This nitrogenous base is called adenine. And attached to the ribose sugar, there's three phosphate groups. So that's the general structure of ATP. Now, when you combine the ribose sugar and the nitrogenous base adenine, you get a nucleoside. And that nucleoside is called adenosine. Now, because we have three phosphate groups on the left, this is called triphosphate, tri for three. So thus we have the name adenosine triphosphate. A nucleotide has three parts, a ribose sugar, a nitrogenous base, and a phosphate group. So ATP is a nucleotide. It has three phosphate groups instead of one. Now ATP is the energy currency of all cells. Cells use the energy stored in ATP to power necessary activities such as driving endergonic reactions, or actively transporting substances across cell membranes, or just movement in general. And so ATP is very important. The cell uses it as a form of short-term energy storage. So here we have the actual structure of ATP above. The energy stored in ATP can be found in the high energy phosphate bonds. These phosphate bonds are unstable. And so they're ready to react. They have a low activation energy. The reason why they're unstable is due to the presence of all of these negative charges on the oxygen atoms of the phosphate groups. So these negative charges repel each other. Like charges repel, opposite charges attract. And so due to this electrostatic repulsion, the bonds in the phosphate groups are unstable. They're ready to break. And so this molecule has a lot of stored potential energy that's ready to be released. And the way we could release that energy is by releasing a phosphate group. When ATP converts into ADP, it's going to release a phosphate group plus energy. Some of that energy will be used to drive endergonic reactions in cells, and some of it will be lost as heat. Now, this is a hydrolysis reaction, so it requires water. So the overall reaction looks like this. It's ATP, excuse me, ATP rather, plus water, turning into ADP plus phosphate plus energy. So that's a hydrolysis reaction. Now, because energy is released in this reaction, this is known as an exergonic reaction. Now let's talk about the reverse reaction. That is making ATP from ADP. So when we combine ADP or adenosine diphosphate with phosphate, and if we put energy into the system, some of that energy is going to be stored as ATP and water is going to be a product as well. Because we're using energy to make this reaction work, this is an endergonic reaction. So make sure you understand that. Exergonic reactions release energy, and let me just write that. And endergonic reactions absorb energy or take in energy. So when ATP converts into ADP, energy is released. That's an exergonic process. When we're making ATP, we're absorbing energy to do, the, to do that. So that's an endergonic process. ATP is produced in mitochondria, which can be found inside of cells. On the right, we have a diagram with an enzyme known as ATP synthase. ATP synthase is a protein that is embedded in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. This protein-based enzyme is responsible for the production of ATP. And here's how it works. Protons from the intermembrane space flow into this enzyme and out to the mitochondrial matrix. 
as it does so, the energy that is captured from the flow of protons, some of it is used to spin this rotor, which smashes ADP and P into ATP. And so that's how ATP is made. This process is known as chemiosmosis. If you think of osmosis, osmosis is a type of diffusion. In this example, there's two driving forces here. The first one is the concentration gradient. The concentration of protons in the intermembrane space is high, whereas the concentration of protons in the mitochondrial matrix is low. And so by diffusion, the hydrogen ions will flow from the intermembrane space into the mitochondrial matrix. The second driving force is an electrostatic force. Because we have a high concentration of protons, the intermembrane space will have a net positive charge. And because we have a deficiency of protons in the mitochondrial matrix, this is going to be less positive or more negative. So the two driving forces here, we have a concentration gradient and an electrostatic attraction, the hydrogen ions will be attracted to the negatively charged mitochondrial matrix. And so that's going to cause these ions to flow into ATP synthase. As it does so, some of the energy that is captured from that flow will be used to create ATP. So some of that energy is stored in the form of ATP. So that's how ATP is made inside the mitochondria through an enzyme known as ATP synthase, and the process is called chemiosmosis. So that's it for this video. That's all I got regarding ATP.